it's a, a basic question, but what informs this incredibly l fluid style? Because it's, a, it's just these cascading arpeggios, and then it's the choppy chords, and then occasionally you'll throw in a slightly flash guitar, so you might treat yourself to a couple of pentatonic scales, but then you're yeah. back in. You know, there's a lot of capo work, isn't there? So yeah. was was it all coming from for you? What was? Uh, it's coming from melody, really. It's coming from, um, you know, uh, it's coming from really being an addicted to melody and also what just what the guitar can do, you know. So, and always, I always use, you, you know, use the guitar as, um, I guess, as, uh, I never forget that it's, for me, it's the greatest machine to make pop records on. I like that idea more than almost anything. I've, I've got it in my bones that it's a beautiful instrument that I want to fetishize. Mm. There's no getting around that. That's just inside me. And, and, but intellectually, um, I always try and honor and not take for granted that it's, a, that it's an electronic machine that makes pop music. So I've got that going on. So I like the idea of it making a record while I play. And then, you know, then you just follow your melodic instinct. So I was watching this... Um, Clint Eastwood movie one night in 85 or something, 86, with the sound down on the television. And there was some sort of scene going on in a nightclub, but the, but the sound was down. And I was playing, I just found myself going. So what's going on there is I'm already hearing that. So I just follow that tune. <laughs> so it's the melody and you, you're you're chasing the melody I'm along yeah, and you're no filling in the gaps there's no it. thinking when that happens you're just following where well, how do i find that tune it's like chasing something down mm. a really beautiful country road at night you just, where is that that specter it's just it sort of gets sort of it's like a chasing an angel yeah. or something really yeah is it true also that you bought a lot of strats from john entwistle of the who I did actually. I was lucky enough to uh, in yeah in about yeah. 80, 85, 86, I bought a. Were you yeah. a big fan of the of the Who? Like, a, yeah, I was. Yeah, point. and I, I just I just got the message from John Entwistle like he was like he wanted to flog me a bunch of strats cheap. So um, that was like a, that was a few hundred quid well spent actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a job lot of sixty strats from John Entwistle yeah, the Who. Yeah, I got about I got about five or six. Yeah. Seven, and I got a couple of Gretches off him, and then I got the Les Paul that Noel Gallagher's now got. That Noel Gallagher uh, borrowed and has never given back. <laughs> Do you know what? I... <laughs> Let's put, call a spade a spade. <laughs> I mean, he's, the man's a thief. He's a guitar thief. Um, put that in the Brighton and Argus as well. So, what's it like? I mean, because you've you've gone through this in, this is ridiculously varied career and playing with everybody from Billy Bragg and Kirsty McCall through to Electronic like last night at Islington you played Getting Away With It and it just went completely off obviously yeah, yeah. fucking nuts yeah. and, and, but like you say you're playing with Hans Zimmer now and playing on things like the Spider-Man soundtrack amongst others yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know what, what's you've, you've given us a pretty decent description actually of, of how you come up with stuff but is that how you do it? Do you kind of watch scenes and improvise things, or do, you, do they sometimes just describe it and you come up with something that's a bit of vibe? Or? No, um, the um, I try to think. Uh, if I, have to, I might have to do something mad here, but um, no, on the Spider-Man thing, um, for instance, there was because uh, I haven't got the. See, it's where you need a double neck. Where's yeah. the double neck when you need <laughs> one, right? But um, the, there's uh, um, there was there was. Uh, there's a scene in the Spider-Man film that, and um, I was sort of trying to anticipate what Hans was doing. And in the background, I had, I had, um, I, I was going into an amp, and um, that he wasn't hearing, and he had headphones on, and he was just doing something really, really out there. And and I, so I just started playing. Uh, And then he could hear it coming out of my headphones. I wasn't brave enough to sort of spoil his, get in the way of his 
dealing with this massive bit of soundtrack, but I, I made sure it was loud enough in case any, what, what's that? And that ended up being the riff that goes, he built everything around. So I just go on a hunch and I sort of step back and I kind of just sort of suggest little things in, in his ear. And if he likes it, he'll get just me to do it. Planting seeds in, in the great mind of Zimmer, basically. Yeah, that's kind of my job with Hans, yeah. There's almost a sort of uh, tubular bellsy feel to that, isn't there? It's yeah. Pegiated. And um, what's it? Um, what's it? I don't, it won't really work without, the, without, uh, without me orchestra. But. <laughs> That's, that's Inception, which yeah. is so simple when you see it, but um, when you watch it with the, with the action on screen, it's very, very, very dramatic. And the trick is to, how I came up with that was I heard, if you sit down and try and do something that's impressive, you just play too much. Yeah. You know, and no one needs that, you know, so I just sort of imagined it and then tried to find it. If you, if you, if you approach music too intellectually like I am going to do something impressive it doesn't really sound like music it just sounds like a bunch of bullshit yeah. and, it, and if it comes from a place of uh, of listening this is why I like putting guitars in tunings you know like um, because you don't really know what you're doing and a lot of people get so hung up on look how good I am um, that gets in the way of music and if you put the guitar in a tuning um, I used to put guitar in tunings and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> that must be a nightmare to tran like you like you say, you, you, I mean it's like sometimes when you sling your capo on, it sounds amazing, but you don't know what the chords are really. And that's time. really good, it's really good for you because it's a, it's a strange mentality because you think when you want to learn an instrument, you sort of get this thing about, okay, I want to learn, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. Um, and be and that's kind of impressive but you have to switch your mind you have to decide what 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 it is you're trying to achieve and um, you know um, 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 so when I put the guitar in this tune in um, yesterday <laughs> like it Just using your ear, just... Fine. Yeah, I, I had no idea what it was. And it ended up, I ended up playing, coming up with a Smith song. But um, actually, I didn't know what I was doing. And, and um, that's frightening to some people because they, you spend all of that time trying to learn what to do. Um, so anyway, so I ended up with this track that ended up being um, Headmaster Ritual. And I just, I was kind of, I didn't know what I was doing. So I said... be the, the riff of yours that you kind of most enjoy playing at the moment because um, I mean last night he played at Islington last night and well, you did a Headmaster's Ritual oh, I'm, we'll try to cheer this. and you did you know the, the big ones like Big Mouse Strikes again you did off the new album you did things like The Tracers just really bang it high hello it's fantastic um, you know Bug but you know, there's so many ridiculously strident uh, sort of anthems, you know, but and not many guitarists get get to do that, you know, that, that riffs that like Purple Haze or a whole lot of love or something like that, immediately recognizable. What's well, um, I mean, obviously, I like uh, is this in tuna yesterday? So I've made that <laughs> joke, haven't I? Well, obviously, um, I haven't got the trem on here now, however, but How Sun Is Now is a really good one to play. Mm. 
uh, you know, we're all, you know we're, all, we're all really impressed by technique, and it is impressive. But I think this thing that really sticks, sticks with you is, is, is the thing we're talking about, that stuff that is done for the sake of making music. And I mean, uh, for, but luckily for me, again, you know, I'm so lucky to be a guitar player because I have all these, you know, things about just following what music does for you as a feeling, but, there's, but the guitar is hands down the coolest and greatest instrument mm. to do anything on, I think. But, uh, uh, That's my favourite Smith Swift. It's so beautiful. It's, it's amazing to see it, isn't it? And why I came up with that riff? is because um, I was sat on the bus sat, waiting for the rest of the band to come on the tour bus, just really, really lonely, you know, just really mis sad and lonely and missing my girlfriend and missing being at home. And I think that's kind of what it sounds like. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's technically quite a tricky riff, as you, I've just demonstrated. <laughs> but, um, but the thing the thing I love about it is that that's, I, was, I was able to play the sound of my feelings, yeah. you know, which is just the greatest thing in the world for being a musician. Better, you know, it is. It's the best thing. Yeah.